we were doing Kumon last week. And we uh, were sporadic running the ball. Uh, got a lot more penalties than we normally get, uh, but the defense uh, again saved the day by making a lot of big plays and basically eliminating uh, any threat that uh, San Diego State posed. You know, you really look at their offense and they had more than a three, four, five prong attack because a, a good quarterback and excellent wide receivers. But I thought the key might have been the fact that you stopped their running a game. You got the, the lead, I think, I'm sure it helped that too. But Paul Hewitt, an outstanding running back, and you really shut him, he, him down and also Tommy Booker, who came in later in the game. We did. Uh, I thought our defensive front really dominated uh, San Diego State's line and, and eliminated the run. In fact, we, uh, after uh, San Diego State made their only drive for their touchdown, uh, which was against our basic defensive group. Uh, we just elected to forget playing our uh, regular 50 defense and going with our nickel package, and, and they couldn't even run against that effectively. So uh, I think that was the turning point in the game. Once we got our nickel package in there, started putting pressure on the quarterback, didn't give them the soft zones over the middle that they completed the passes uh, on their first touchdown drive. I thought that the defense basically controlled the whole game. Coach, uh, talk about the emotions in this game. You had some players during the course of the, re the week that, that learned that their football careers were over, and, and I know it was a shock to everybody, the players included yourself. And how much of a factor do you think that might have had early in the game? Well, I think it was a, a, a major uh, hurdle to overcome uh, with the announcement that Mike Blakey and Gino Zahari were ruled out of further football at the University of Oregon, uh, particularly uh, the, the late news of Mike Blakey on Thursday after a brain scan uh, showed that he had some minor bleeding uh, in the head uh, from a, a blow that he sustained in the Stanford game. Uh, doctors have ruled him out. He's going to be fine, which is the good news. Uh, uh, I think our team felt very badly for Mike uh, not being able to play. Uh, he's put so much into the program, not only on the field, but off the field. He's a scholar athlete. Uh, represents, uh, I think, his family and, and the university very, very well uh, off the field as well as on it. And uh, it was a big uh, traumatic week, I think, emotionally for our football team. And I think we wanted to go out and play hard and win, uh, and, and we started well, and then we just kind of relaxed and couldn't get it back. The Ducks won the toss of the coin, elected to defer their decision until the second half, so they will kick off, and the Aztecs will take over control of the football to start the ball game. Kirk Dennis to kick off for the Ducks. Fielded by Patrick Rowe, a real speed burner, but boy, when you get hit like that, Daryl Singleton, you don't go very far. Daryl uh, returning down to the Southern California area where he's from. He's from Los Angeles and makes a big impression on the first play of the game. <clears throat> Good pressure by Matt Brock right there and tackled by Kearns for a short gain. I'm sure they probably thought maybe with Hewitt and the speed in the backfield they might be able to work on your linebackers, but your linebackers did a very good job. Right. Good job by Peter Brantley coming from the backside there to tackle the play for a one-yard gain. Pressure by Matt Brock again in Platt's face, and the throw is incomplete. So after a very poor punt of only 14 yards, the Ducks get excellent field position at the 38. Lattenberry gets three. On the draw play, comes back and pops it for 13. It's good old-fashioned football in the grass and the dirt, Todd, huh? And yeah, all we needed was a little rain infield. to get some mud down there. It ended up <laughs> in real football. Replay on the draw play here. You can see Lavelle comes through, gets a good block on the linebacker, cuts him down, and Latin runs through there, uh, was off to a pretty good game running the football before he sprained his wrist and uh, was unable to finish the game, and uh, we're hopeful he'll be 100% for SC. So the next play gained only one. This is a second and nine. Sweet play, good block by Joe Merton there on the outside linebacker and an excellent run by Derek. Down Lavelle picks up 18 yards. Watch Joe Merton at the top of your screen, stay with the outside linebacker, stays with him, stays with him, stays with him, and then actually pushes him on out and Derek cuts back up inside. Derek breaks a couple tackles there uh, before he's tackled down on the three yard line. So it's first and goal for the Ducks at the uh, three yard line. And it only took one play from there. Lavelle hurdles the top for the touchdown. Up and over, he's uh, had a little bit of a dry spell in scoring. He needed to get into the end zone. He did it. This is the first of three for him in this game. Uh, sees the opening up inside, leaps up over. Good running by Derek. So the Ducks go 38 yards, five plays. The drive takes only a little over two minutes. Quickly on the board, you see 11:29 to play. This is a third down and 11 here. A little pass underneath, but 
Gilbreth is unable to break any tackles, so again, the Aztecs forced to punt. And you get good field position, and boom, right away. Touchdown, Terry Obi, 66 yards from Pete Nelson. Terry's not looking back until he gets through the end zone. And quickly, the Ducks have two touchdowns on their first two offensive possessions. Let's take another look at it from down low. Wish we could have 14 points in six plays. You can see uh, Pete's looking here quick. We're looking for a little hitch pass. They roll the thing up, and we have to uh, change the route. And Terry uh, takes it deep. Pete sees him, and uh, nobody's going to catch him. Terry Obi had a very good game. Six, uh, I should say, uh, a number of receptions for over 100 yards. Excellent contest. Let's take a look at this as far as our play of the day is concerned. We try to diagram a play that's got a very key part in what eventually happens in the course of the ball game. Uh, tell us what happened, Coach. I guess it's, it's a, a situation not only where you design a play, but you also maybe get a little luck, too, huh? Well, you do. Uh, we're in a uh, left formation here, Todd, and we're just call it a little simple three-step drop hitch pass. It's our 90 series, and what we're planning on doing is just running a little hitch with the wide receivers. But... Uh, the complication of modern-day offense is <laughs> when, uh, when the defense changes and the corner starts to roll up here, the receiver and the quarterback have to change the route. And what we try to do on the corner roll is run the slant inside because we know the corner is going to try to jam us and we try to slip inside. Terry couldn't get inside, so he adjusted and ran outside and went down the field. Pete, you can see uh, when he takes his drop, took a little short drop and then kind of waited and waited and then took a couple more steps and threw it down the field. And we got a little bit lucky because the safety slipped on the, on the dirt infield here. But uh, it was a good adjustment by Terry Obey and Pete Nelson off of a simple little, what is normally about a four to five yard hitch pattern. And they turned it into a 66 yard touchdown play. Not bad for Nelson, who of course uh, has not seen a lot of action this year. So a nice on the field change. You can see him hesitate there. It's supposed to be a quick pass and now Throwing off his heels, he sees Terry breaking behind him. You can see the safety slip down there in the, in the dirt infield, and Terry goes all the way. He has a big neck. He caught three passes for, I think, 119 yards. Uh, just a, a real big game for him. Uh, super 66-yard uh, touchdown reception. He's uh, had a lot of big plays in his uh, career so far. And did he has, you think about it. As you mentioned, Washington State, uh, Washington last year, another long touchdown pass here. So with the extra point by Kirk Dennis, the Ducks lead 14 to nothing, but they're not done in the first quarter. A couple of miscues on exchanges by the quarterback and the center. The second one right here results in a fumble recovery by David Cusano. Cusano did a real good job, but his second good game in a row, you can see the, the ball come out there and Cusano uh, gets down and pulls it away from the quarterback. But Wells is uh, one of the top centers in the nation, is rated by a lot of the preseason publications, and Cassano did a great job on him, I thought. So the fumble recovery at the Aztec 47. This was a, a disappointing series for us. We have the pass there. Joe Merton uh, had his hands on it, but it uh, looked like the defender kind of flicked it away from him, and that was a big play there. Now we break a, a nice run here. Latin makes a nice run, gets a face mask penalty, gets a first down, but the play's nullified because we're holding, they're face masked, and uh, instead of us now really taking it and putting it in the way, uh, we struggle here and have to punt the ball away. This one, maybe if he had it back again, he might have had a touchdown off of it a little higher. Yeah, just uh, put a little bit more air into that. And, and Pete will, uh, you know, Pete can throw very well, and he'll do a, a good job as, as he gets a little more playing time. Good play again by David Cassano uh, coming in there and making the play for no gain. We'll take another look at that one. You see Cassano running a, a little slant move, runs completely around the center, comes right back and gets Hewitt in the backfield. No gain. Second down and 10. And uh, at this point, the Aztecs uh, thinking pass a lot more often than run. Down the middle. Good coverage, almost intercepted. Almost intercepted. Uh, good job of breaking up the pass. Kahmeyer splattered the receiver, and Roy Derry almost intercepted. Here, Platt goes deep, and Daryl Reed, uh, we had a little uh, misalignment there in the thing, and Daryl Reed saved us by getting his big paw up there and batting that one down because uh, they were behind us. So, first and 10 now at the Aztec 33 after another very poor punt, and here comes Derek Lavelle bolting for 22 yards down to the Aztec 11. 
Remember last year, the longest run we had from scrimmage, I think, was about 18 yards, and we've had a lot more of them this year. Good block by Andy Sunia kicking out on the counter play. Uh, Derek takes it up inside. Nice run in here, breaks several tackles, protects the football when he's hit, trying to go for extra yards. Uh, real big play in the dirt. <laughs> First and 10 at the Aztec 11. There was some question whether it be dirt or sod, and they've elected to wait to put the sod in until next week. Good job there, uh, play that's designed to go up the middle. We get stuffed at the line, and, and Derek bounced it outside left. And here he takes it, gets a good block from Latin Berry there. Just gets his ankle tripped up. We probably would have gotten that one into the end zone. So the Ducks leading 14 0 late in the first quarter. Lavelle takes it down to the goal line. And one play later, we'll uh, take it in for the touchdown. Up and over. His second touchdown of the game. Five plays, 33 yards. We'll look at it again from down low. You see the line firing out. Does a good job of collapsing the San Diego State defense and giving Derek the opportunity to go over the top. So 21 0 with 2.17 to play in the first quarter. The Ducks will kick off, and again, the defense will come up with a big play. Here's a gain of 17, so it wasn't on this one, but it's the next one. First and 10 at the Aztec 45 as Platt is under pressure, and Matt Brock doing the honors with the sack. The fumble, it's recovered by Devin Fitzpatrick. Another big, big opportunity here. Nice pass rush by Matt Brock. Ball comes out. You'll see him coming in from the bottom of your screen here. He comes in. Platt trying to step up. Matt, in his good way, he has a, he's done a lot, a lot of that, uh, things like that where he comes in and just sees that ball and slaps it out, gets the sack, and the ball rolls forward, and Fitzpatrick recovers it. Now is the chance to go to the juggler and put him away, and uh, we can't move the ball and have to punt it. So they get it back. Platt's first pass is a reception by Rowe, Oldham on the stop, and then again the defense with a big play on second down, or first down and 10 from the 24. This time, Kozak coming off on, on the uh, rush and getting the sack. So that was the final play of the first quarter. We'll look at it again. You can see Scott Kozak with his speed just explodes now right past the tackle of San Diego State and Sachs Platt for a big loss. Let's get right to the second quarter highlights. The Ducks already leading 21 to nothing at the end of the first quarter of play. We start the second quarter with a little razzle-dazzle by the Aztecs as Jackson, on the reverse, gets about 15 yards. We were in second and 20 in our nickel package and uh, didn't play the reverse very well. Now we come here with Kozak on the blitz. Uh, comes through clean and forces Platt to throw a wounded duck out there. A wounded Aztec to boot, too, as yeah. he got a good piece of Platt. It did come back in the ball game. So the Ducks leading 21 to nothing and trying to get some more, but unfortunately, Pete Nelson's pass is intercepted by Casey Copeland. And so the Aztecs have good field position at the 43. Third and three, and uh, Pete didn't see the free safety step up in there. Now they run the little play to Hewitt, breaks a couple of tackles. Roy Derry comes up and makes a nice tackle. Gain of only about two, second and eight. Matt Brock with good pressure again. Chris Oldham with tremendous coverage. So third down and eight. Speaking Matt. of coverage. Brett's upset he should have had an interception. But he takes the deflection and that stops the drive. Watch Matt Brock again come right by the San Diego State tackle, be right in there pressuring the quarterback just as he releases the ball. Brett Young, excellent coverage, man-to-man -man coverage down the field. Goes up, both hands, can't quite hang on to the football. So the Aztecs punt, it goes into the end zone. The Ducks get possession of the ball but cannot move it. So here comes San Diego State again. Platt to Jackson, good for 22 yards. So our offense kind of took the holiday here uh, several series <laughs> in a row, three downs and punt, and uh, got to put the defense in bad position here. Good uh, tackle there by Tom Comer. He can't stand up on that dirt infield either. It was hard. It was hard. Here, Brock in pursuit, dives Cassano, pushes him out of bounds uh, for a sack and force San Diego State to kick a field goal, which is good. 
Ackerman's boot from 34 yards out is good. 41 yards, six plays. But in essence, uh, the defense did a pretty good job keeping the Aztecs out of the end zone. Come back with a toss to Derek Lavelle. Great run here. I don't like the way he's carrying that football, <laughs> waving it around like a red flag out there for a bull. Uh, excellent run, though. Breaks a tackle uh, behind the line of scrimmage here. Randy will hide in at fullback there. Andy Shania pulling out there. You can see just shakes the tackle right there. Joe Merton getting another good block. And here, Derek just takes over. Give him the little dipsy do there. Good spin move. And then a little power to boot to dive forward for some extra yards. Gain of 18. The next play we see is a third and five. Joe Merton uh, playing with some uh, bad ribs and a bad thigh uh, has one go through his hands. So the Ducks forced to punt. And the Aztecs take over deep in their own territory. This was really their only sustained drive of the night. They, uh, Ran a little quick out on us there in, uh, in the blitz, and we were a little too soft in the coverage. And now they throw in over our regular defense with a good play action fake, freezes the linebackers, gets the ball in front of the safeties. Come back to throw again. Good protection here. Throw over the middle again, and uh, Kalmeyer rings the bell, but Rowe hangs on. A nice catch. Very good and uh, very promising young receiver. <clears throat> good defense here by Chris Oldham. Chris Oldham uh, looks like he's got flypaper on the receivers. He just, uh, he's covering people so well. He's, he's had a great year so far. So it is fourth and three. Aztecs decide to go for it. A little bootleg by Platt. Finds his tight end, Reed Martin. Good enough for the first down. It was a big play there. They executed it very well. Get out on the rollout and find the tight end for the first down. A little play action fake. Come back to the tight end and picks up another first down. So the next play we see, second and one from the one. And Platt sneaks it in for the touchdown with the extra point, 21 to 10. What are the things you try to do in a situation like this where you bolt it out to a big lead and you maybe can even feel your team uh, down a little bit? Well, we tried to do something right go. here with the dipsy do, the old flea flicker, and uh, it was covered well. And couldn't complete it, try to generate a little excitement, get the offense going, but we couldn't move the ball. And here Brock gets a big, big sack. Uh, Platt was going to try to throw the screen pass, and we were in man coverage, and uh, we covered the back. You see the back slipping at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, our back is up there covering the guy. He knows he can't throw it, and then he turns around and sees Brock right in his face, and we get a sack for a 20-yard loss. Yeah, Brock gets the sack, but the credit really should maybe go to Rory Derry. He was the man who was the spy in there waiting for the back to come out on the screen. Third and 27. Booker stopped for a gain of one. You call timeout because uh, with, you see, 108 to play, you have a chance maybe to get some more points. <laughs> this week it worked. Last week it didn't, <laughs> just before the half. Nelson now on a good play fake hits Sam Archer for a 20-yard gain and a first down. We're out of our timeouts. We've used them all on defense. You can see, though, we do get protection here, uh, has time to throw, and that's what we have to uh, give our quarterbacks more of. We just have to do a lot better job pass blocking. And it's not always the line. Sometimes the backs have missed assignments, which you'll see here in a few minutes. Good throw, good catch, excellent concentration. Again, the Nelson to Obi connection. Terry uh, is averaging over 20 yards a catch in his career at the University of Oregon, and this is a, an example of why. Nice pass here by Pete Nelson. And Obi has the concentration to hang on as he gets hit when he catches the ball. A gain of 35. <coughs> but unfortunately for the Ducks, the drive stalls. Sack here by Mal, the linebacker, nails Nelson. That's our back's responsibility, the linebacker coming in. And uh, we have to now settle for a field goal. And Kirk Dennis drills it. Had plenty of room to spare from 42 yards. We move into the third quarter. The Ducks leading at 24 to 10, and we'll get possession of the football to start the third period of play. The halftime ceremonies there down at Jack Murphy Stadium with, as we mentioned, a crowd of about 22,500. So Ackerman to do the kicking. Pretty good return by Derek Lavelle, but uh, nullified to some extent by a clipping call. 
We had some penalties uh, that were uncharacteristic of uh, the way we played earlier this year. We had a couple of penalties in the kicking teams, and uh, that's unusual for us. Here Pete goes up top trying to hit Obi again with a deep one and threw it a little bit over his outside shoulder. If he had thrown it to the inside, I believe that would have been another long reception, but instead it's an interception. And they come out with the draw play right off the bat. Roy Derry comes up and makes a real nice play. We're in our nickel package to start the second half. We, uh, you can see we're in the four-man front. <clears throat> Cassano misses the tackle there, but Roy Derry comes off and makes a tackle for a one-yard gain. Defense holds, gets the ball back for the offense. Trying to get some momentum back. Joe Merton takes about six guys to bring him down. You can see we had a little pressure on that one, too. It's tight end delay. Now we run the sweep into the boundary. Uh, Derek makes a nice cut, spin move, picks up a hard five, six yards. Second down, let's call it about uh, seven. Randy Wilhite. Nice run on the draw play, picks up a first down. We'll look at it again. Good blocking at the point of attack there. Chris Husco doing a good job. Derek Lavelle, lead, the lead blocker in there. And Randy, extra effort, extra hard run, and he's, uh, he's playing some real good football this year. Indeed he is. Third down and 10 on this play here. Nelson sacked, the drive stalls. But Kirk Dennis comes in and will attempt a 46-yard field goal. And he drilled it. That uh, could have been good from uh, maybe 60 yards. It could have. And the Ducks extend their lead to 17 points. We're in the third quarter. San Diego State tries to come back. There's Oldham again. You usually see him batting the ball down or covering it pretty good. Uh, pressure there. We don't cover the man on the screen pass. We have a busted assignment in our package on that one. And Brett Young runs him out of bounds. Next play we see is second and six for the Aztecs. Peter Brantley with the good pressure. Doesn't quite get there soon enough. Uh, Darrell Reed a little too soft on the coverage. And they catch it in front and step out of bounds for a first down. Next play we see is a second and five. Platt rolls again. Finds his receiver. This is Jennings out of the backfield. Good enough for a first down. So the Aztecs moving the football. And the Ducks trying to keep it out of the end zone. Good job there by Scott Whitney coming up and making the tackle. Gain of five. There's another second and five. Almost disaster here, but to Platt, the line of scrimmage was the 17. You notice he threw it from about the 16. He was over the line of scrimmage, so that is an illegal forward pass. Loss of down, five-yard penalty. So the Aztecs have to attempt the field goal. It's good. So they get the field goal back that the Ducks just got it, 27-13. Looks like Las Vegas lights there, and all those flashing lights and numbers and stuff. Seven and a half minutes to go in the third period. And Bobby Brothers is now the quarterback for the Ducks. He's smart. He says, I'll give it to Derek <laughs> Littabell to start this drive off. Counter play, and Derek uh, has a big hole. You can see a good job by Andy Sunee and Todd Kunzman pulling, uh, creating the hole. Good block downfield by Chris Husco, and a big gain on first down. Indeed it is. Gain of 15 yards for Lavelle, who once again went over the century mark. Sprint out. Bob finds Terry Obey. Good spin move, good extra move, rather than just going out of bounds there. Terry uh, gave him the old spin slip. Uh, the sprint out move here, Terry Obey had come across the formation in motion. Brothers throws a nice pass on the run, and most receivers would just go out of bounds there. But Terry makes a spin move and picks up another eight yards. Gain of 18 on the play. Takes the ball down to the Aztec 38-yard line. Lavelle gets six. Now the drive kind of stalled. Uh, you talk about shooting yourself in the foot and so forth with some penalties here. Yeah, Brothers does a good job scrambling out here against man coverage. Picks up the first down, but we get a holding penalty. And here we go. Uh, these are sloppy mistakes that uh, we haven't made a lot of in the first uh, three games, and now we're making them. And uh, an ill-advised pass there. Uh, Trying to hit Archer in, in the middle there, and he floated a little too much in the safety, intercepted it. Good job by Peter Brantley. Get some help there from Devin Fitzpatrick for the sack. Brantley coming in on the nickel rush as well. He's on the four down lineman, spins back inside. Platt outruns us on this one. Mark Wynn comes up to make the tackle. 
So the next play we see is a third and seven. They try to run the option. Tom Kalmeyer played the quarterback and the pitch man. We're in a blitz here, and uh, Tom makes a great play, forces the pitch, and gets there. You can see we've got people on the inside-out pursuit, but Kalmeyer makes a tackle for a five-yard loss. Let's move into the fourth period with the Ducks holding on to a comfortable lead, although I guess when San Diego State has the football, it's never really totally out of reach. And we start the fourth period with the Aztecs on the drive, gain of about 20 here. First and 10 from the 42, but the defense comes up with another big play. Mark Wynn, redshirt freshman from Beaverton with the interception. Pretty good return, too. I thought he was going to score here for a minute. Does a good job protecting that football at the there end, though, go. doesn't he? And here, Brandon Jumper. Woo! We're Brandon Jumper, huh? Player. Yes, sir. Big freshman runs hard in there. Good Make block. block, too. Good block there. And Derek takes it up inside. Come right back with Brandon Jumper up the middle. Lavelle gets his third touchdown of the night. It's back down to the Southern California area next week as the Ducks travel to the Coliseum to take on the undefeated third-ranked USC Trojans. Thank you very much for joining us this week. Join us next week. We'll have highlights of the USC game, and if for no other reason, see what sweaters the coach and I wear next week. Thanks for joining us, and good afternoon. <laughs>